you're looking at is a knitting needle. And I, I happen to have in my uh, crew preference a couple of knitting needles. And uh, not that we have a lot of time to do knitting up here, but there's some other neat things you could do with them. So here I have a piece of paper, and I rub the knitting needle with a piece of paper. And now I'm going to take a syringe with a little Teflon uh, cannula. I'm going to squirt drops of water out, and look what happens when those drops of water get close to that charged knitting needle. It's about charge forces, and of course, charges can exert a potential field, as we call it, so it can exert a force at a distance with no tangible connection. And so you have a charge drop that was ejected from the Teflon tipped syringe, and then you have the, the charged uh, knitting needle, and uh, they're going to be attracted if they're opposite charges, but because the drop has some velocity to it, it's orbiting around the knitting needle. Now this knitting needle happens to be a little different than uh, when we started out. This knitting needle is made out of Teflon, and uh, Teflon has some really neat static charging properties when you rub it, and I figured it'd be good to have a Teflon knitting needle when you're on station. And here we have some little tiny droplets. They kind of remind me of flies on a picnic out in uh, Houston. And these droplets, the bigger ones that you're seeing there, are about uh, six to seven millimeters. That Teflon rod is about six and a half millimeters in diameter. And, and here you see a bunch of little tiny droplets, and, and they're making spirals, and they go down the cylinder for a while, and then they'll reverse their direction and spiral back. Now, if you look closely up in the upper right-hand corner, you'll see the injection nozzle from the syringe, but you also see that I have a second knit needle, and that knit needle is made out of nylon. And so you can rub the nylon, you can rub the Teflon, and there's some interesting charge properties that happen uh, between Teflon and nylon. And, and I found that it's useful to have these when you want to put a charge on a droplet so it will orbit your uh, knit needle. And of course, uh, once you set up a knit needle like this, you start to play with the water droplets. Uh, you you just you just can't have too much video like this. It, it is it's so much fun to watch these little droplets and and notice as they get closer and closer to the the knit needle, uh, their orbits go faster and faster. And the further away from the knit needle, the slower the orbit. The closer to the knit needle, the faster the orbit. And that's the same thing with the orbital mechanics when you have a satellite around a planet. And again, the physics is different. A satellite's orbiting planets is uh, gravitational potentials and gravitational forces. And this is static electric uh, potentials and static electric forces. It's uh, an, an analogous uh, rationale to why we do surface tension experiments up here. Uh, surface tension is a very weak force and gravity overpowers it and when you go in a weightless environment you effectively remove the gravitational forces and now you can look at unadulterated surface tension physics. I'd like to, to leave now with a question for students or anyone else that might be watching this and, and that's to, to try to figure out why do I have a Teflon knit needle and why do I have a nylon knit needle and, uh, and, and why I use the knit needles the way I did. Well, that was just way cool, Don. We were really enjoying that.